An analysis of stopping by woods on a snowy evening. This is probably Robert Frost's most widely read and least understood poem. Some people have taken the lines like the darkest evening of the year and suggested that this indicates depression. Furthermore, they have looked at the end of the poem with the repetition of the line and miles to go before I sleep and have claimed that the poem is about death. During his life, Robert Frost addressed this many times and stated emphatically that this poem is not about death, nor does the structure of the poem support such a reading. Frost has sometimes written poems about death, Out Out, Death of a Hired Man, and Home Burial come to mind immediately. All of these poems are written, appropriately, in blank verse, befitting the subject of those poems. This poem, however, is written in quatrains of rhymed iambic tetrameter. That is, it has four lines per verse, with four iambic feet per line. The tetrameter suggests that the poem is lighter than the more common pentameter. So the poem has a relatively light style, but the rhyme and meter also suggest the motion of the poem itself, and this motion is key to understanding the poem. Now consider the rhyme scheme. It is A A B A B B C B C C D C D D D D. See how the third line of each stanza draws us into the next stanza. This connection forms the verses into a chain with each stanza leading into the next. The final repetition acts as an ellipsis indicating that the chain goes on. Consider how willfully the narrator comes into the scene at the beginning of the poem and exits the scene at the end. This echoes two themes that Frost uses together frequently, departure and freedom. Frost has written another somewhat oddly titled poem called How Hard It Is to Keep From Being King When It's In You and In the Situation. In this poem, he lays his premise down more clearly and precisely with the line the only certain freedoms in departure. For Frost, freedom is established in departure. We free ourselves from the present by escaping to somewhere else. He explores this theme again in Escapist Never, where he states that it is not escape, but pursuit. He runs face forward. He is a pursuer. He seeks a seeker who in turn seeks another still, lost far into the distance. The final three lines establish the chain we see created here. His life is a pursuit of a pursuit forever. It is the future that creates his present. All is an interminable chain of longing. However, there is another pattern to the poem that is established by the structure of the stanzas. The narrator comes into the woods in the first stanza and leaves in the last stanza. In between, there is a stanza of darkness and a stanza of silence. Look a moment at the title, and we can see this same pattern established as a chain. Stress, unstress, unstress, stress, and so on. The pattern is revealed in each stanza. In the first stanza, we see woods and snow in the first and last lines. Between these, we are presented with the things that are not. The villager's house, and the villager not seeing the narrator. In the second stanza, we have the visible horse and the darkness in the first and last lines. In the middle, we have the absent farmhouse and the objects that the narrator is in between. In the third stanza, we have the sound of the bells and the wind and the snow in the first and last lines. Between these, we have the missing question and the lack of sound. In the final stanza, the pattern is somewhat implied. The first line contains the concretely described woods, and the last line is the narrator's exit. The second line is about the unkept promises, while the third line is simply the idea of leaving, because the narrator does not leave until the final line. There the miles become actual. One final note about the overall stanza structure. The second and third stanzas are about the things which are not. The second stanza is about the things which cannot be seen because of the extreme darkness, while the third stanza is about the things which cannot be heard in the silence. 
The inner stanzas stand between the active first and last stanzas where the narrator comes in and goes out. This escape from the senses and activity represents the philosophical movement of transcendentalism, which Frost had at one time tried and rejected. The transcendentalists are best known through the book Walden by Thoreau. In that book, Thoreau goes out into the woods, somewhat like the narrator. Frost uses chapter titles from Walden, like The Village, and other symbols like The Woods and Frozen Lake to let us know exactly who he is talking about. Robert Frost published poems criticizing various aspects of the Transcendentalist movement. His poem entitled Etherealizing highlights the essential shortcomings of the movement. It begins, A theory, if you hold it hard enough and long enough, gets rated as a creed, such as that the flesh is something we can slough so that the mind can be entirely freed. He finishes the poem by criticizing the abstract nature and dryness of the movement. There is still much more to say about the symbols in the poem, the horse, the woods, the lake, etc. And I will include those details in our lesson page at zoax.net.